and all, you know, all of those uh, who are tuning in for the first time, second time, third time, all the time. We're, we're thankful for you. We're glad that you joined us today uh, on this Wednesday. Just a, just a couple of things before we get, before we get rolling. Uh, one is, we announced it before, I'll say it again. We, we are at 7.30 Sunday morning. We are going to have a sunrise service at 7.30 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, the band, the production team, myself, uh, will be here and, and, uh, and, and we'll be doing that at 7.30. And we're going to have to go mobile, so we're praying that everything works like it's supposed to when, uh, when, when we go mobile. And then we'll also have our normal uh, 10 o'clock service, our Easter service will be at 10 o'clock, that, that uh, same, uh, same Sunday following the uh, sunrise service. And, Go ahead and get your get your juice and your cracker, your juice and your bread, if you hadn't already, and then we'll take communion together uh, at the same time, but apart. Uh, we'll take that together uh, that that Sunday morning. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited what God's been doing this week, and I'm excited that it's an opportunity to to worship God in an out of a box kind of way. Uh, to to get in there and to uh, to you're really going to have to try. You know, it's not. Like there's a place that we can come to where we're singular, singularly focused on on the Lord right here in the barn. It, you know, we're having to do things different, and it's really it's really had me uh, in the Word more. I've uh, been doing a devotion every morning, so if you hadn't if you hadn't caught it in the morning, I go through uh, Bo, Bo Hayes, the Maker's Mark. Uh, so we're gonna I'll continue doing that now, even after this week. I'll keep on doing that in the morning until until we're done with that. So I'll do the devotion. Bo Hayes, the Maker's Mark, and then also we've been walking with Christ to the cross uh, this week, and, and that's what we're going to be in today is Wednesday. What happened on this day in history, uh, way back when, on a Wednesday, with Christ, uh, Christ last week on the earth before the crucifixion, so we'll get into that later on today, but I, I just want to encourage you, uh, wherever you are in your homes, just to worship with the band, as they worship an audience of one, our Lord Jesus Christ, who's Worthy of all honor and glory and power and praise. I just encourage you uh, just, to, just to stand, be seated, but just to go to the Lord in worship. Go to the Lord in prayer. Go to the Lord in the Word when we break the bread of life uh, together. Uh, I just want to encourage you just to do that and just to honor the Lord. And, and uh, I'm going to kick us off in prayer. And now I'm going to turn it over to the back. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for the opportunity we have, Lord, that, that we have the means. and. And, uh, and the people that, uh, that provide the way uh, so that we can go social, social media, so that we can Facebook Live the message, so we can Facebook Live any any part of the service. God, we praise you and we thank you for that. And I thank you for this team, Lord, that, that faithfully uh, shows up, this production and music team, Lord, that, uh, that faithfully shows up and does what it is that, that, that they do using the gifts and talents and abilities that you've given them to do that. And Lord, thank you. Thank you for sending us what, and thank you for sending us who it was that we needed to do what we're doing today. And God, I just uh, I just pray, uh, Lord, for all of those who submitted prayer requests, Lord, uh, online. God, I just thank you and I praise you, Lord, for uh, for all you've done and continue to do uh, to uh, to bless this body while we're apart. Lord, I thank you for the time that we have together just to focus on you, to worship you, and I thank you, Lord, that uh, that we uh, just give you all honor, glory. And praise that you're due. In Jesus' name, amen.
confession shed our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are here he was pierced for our transgressions crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are healed we are healed by your sacrifice and the life that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are here by his wounds by his wounds we are here by his wounds the 
Amen. Thank you all for that. Neil, I think your battery went dead. <laughs> I just couldn't resist it. Now it's happened to Kylie a time or two, right in the middle of a set. <laughs> I know it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Um, I had put out something on Facebook, and it was just uh, if you had any kind of prayer request or anything, just uh, give you an opportunity just to just to uh, to post it on there, and uh, you know, short and sweet and simple, and and. Um, <laughs> I know I'm the world's worst about getting pretty wordy and uh, <laughs> I have the gift of gab and I can't help it. And uh, sometimes it spilleth over. And, uh, and then my wife has to tell me, shutteth up. And uh, I hear shutteth up a whole lot. She speaks to me in the King James. Uh, anyway, I, there are just a few uh, prayer requests that have, that have come in today. And uh, Etta Ray, uh, she asked that we pray for her sister Paula, sister Paula Reeves. Uh, Sister Paula Reeves, rather, uh, she's got uh, blood clots and um, in her heart, in, in, uh, in, she's got blood clots and stents in her heart. So they're just asking uh, for prayer that that, uh, that those will dissolve. And she can't have surgery uh, unless it's a matter of life or death. So she's dependent on the Lord. Uh, Miss Wanda Bryant, she said that her mom is going in for a biopsy next Thursday. They found a spot on her lung that that, uh, that they're concerned about, and she would certainly appreciate the prayers. And then uh, Miss Jennifer Burton Johnson, she she asked that we pray for her family, along with uh, we had several for president, pastors, healthcare workers, leaders, and her husband's employment. And then uh, Miss Vanita, she had put one on there. There's you know there's some churches. This brings up a good point. You know, there's every pastor, I've talked to several of them, and every pastor is prayerfully considering what God would have for their congregation. And it's not always the same. I've talked to six different pastors in, in the East Texas area, and 50% uh, of them are meeting in the parking lot, and 50% are not. And uh, we've, we've prayerfully considered, and, and we're not. And we, uh, together with, with uh, our Brothers, over, brothers and sisters over at River Cross and Cowboy Church, we had gotten with, uh, with the with the Judge Sims office. Uh, Judge Sims office sent a letter, and they are strongly requesting that we don't do that. I know there may be other churches in Harrison County that are going to do that, and you know that's 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 it's whatever God leads leads us to do. You know that's what we're going to do, and not every church is affected the same. I, I think Mike Blum said it best when he said, "Brother." Every church has their different set of situations, so we really have to prayerfully consider what is applicable and what God would have us to do uh, with our congregation as shepherds of the flock. And so uh, we've prayerfully considered, and, and we're not going to have, we're not going to meet in the parking lot. We're going to, to uh, Facebook Live the, the service at 730, and those that are, we're praying that, you know, that, that man, everything go great with those that are going to corporately meet in the parking lot. We're praying that God protect them and help them and bless them. And, and the same that we're praying for, for our body. And uh, so, I mean, that, that's that, you know, 730, uh, we'll have our, we'll have our sunrise service. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll have our, our regular, regularly scheduled Easter, Easter service. Now, but we do want to lift those up. You know, all, all across the world, we're all affected in different ways. And, and uh, pastors and elders and lay pastors are faced with that decision, you know, in, in cowboy churches across the United States, but in churches across the world, we're, we're all faced with the same dilemma. And we're being led by the same Father. And, and every church is going to do things differently. But we do want to lift up. We do want to lift those up. Uh, uh, Logan Logan Howe uh, said the same. President, nation leaders, healthcare workers, and pastors. Uh, Teresa Walden. Um, she wanted us, you know, just to be in prayer for those that have lost loved ones. There's a bunch of them, you know, thousands of them who, who their mom, their dad, their brother, their sister, their baby, um, you know, 
they're dead today. They're they're no longer with them, and they they've not only they're affected by those that were infected. And uh, we want to continue to to lift up this nation and and the president and and the vice president, our nation and the world, the world leaders and uh, local level, and then on a national level and on a world level. Um, any other prayer requests from this music production team? Anybody I missed? Yes, ma'am. Corona. Okay. I got you. Steve. Yep, Steve does have coronavirus. Uh, a, a distant relative of Donna's, and we want to lift them up, along with all those others in the East Texas area and all over, you know, that are affected by this. Anybody else? All those that are unemployed, all those that are not getting a check right now because of all this, we want to lift them up, uh, that God will lead them, guide them, direct them. And, and I know at our company, we, there's several that are affected that way, and we want to continue to, to lift up the others too. Don? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reboot. We want to lift up that group too. Men and fences as well. Dale? Kathy Galloway. Yep. It was the latest update. The same? Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. yes, we want to continue to lift up Miss Kathy. Wisdom and peace and and then, if any of you, you know what it is, I, you've got it on your mind right now, those who are, who are sitting at home and, and you've got a prayer request, and, and it may, you know, for us, it, it would be like an unspoken. We, we can't hear what that is. We can't hear you say what that is, but you know what that is. And, and we serve an awesome God who is here and there at the same time. Um, and he hears that request. He knows that request. So you that are at home, if you, you have that prayer request, you just speak it out now. Um, and, and, and I know for a fact that, that God is going to hear that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we praise and we thank you, Lord, that, that you're not a limited God. You are unlimited God, and, and uh, you are just omnipresent. Lord, I thank you that, that you're not a God who's in a box. You're, you're a God who's everywhere at one time, and you're working on behalf of all of those who, who are infected, all of those who are affected. Lord, all these health care workers, all of these families, Lord, uh, all of these national leaders, all of these world leaders, Lord, even at, at a local level, all of these church leaders, God, I thank you and I praise you that you are leading and guiding and directing and using that that the enemy meant for bad. God, I thank you that you are causing it to work for good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And I thank you, Lord, that this is causing the world, this is causing the nation to look to you for their source, to look to you for their source of encouragement, their source of health, uh, their source, Lord. And I thank you and I praise you, Father, that, that, uh, that you are working mightily on, on behalf of, of all of those who call out to you. And God, I pray that, that salvations take place through this. God, I thank you that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, we praise you and we thank you for all of these uh, prayer requests that have been mentioned today, all of those who are, who are needing a surgery but can't, can't have it um, uh, because it just hadn't become life or death. Lord, for some of them, they're just inches away from that. God, I thank you that you're moving on their behalf as well. And I thank you for, for healing. I thank you for, for miraculous ways that, that you take care of your children through these desperate times, these desperate situations. God, we praise you and we thank you for your presence that's right here with us. I thank you, Lord, that I, you know. Oh, man, I had so much going on today, I sure don't have this nailed down. God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit of the living God that flows through me to help me uh, to fill in the gaps, Lord. God, I just thank you that you flow through me and bring back to my remembrance things that I've read and studied uh, for today. Lord, we praise you. We thank you that you are the great comforter and you just comfort those who have uh, who've lost loved ones through all of this. Comfort those, Lord. Comfort them, love them, and help them walk through this valley of the shadow of death to see brighter days and to take away the good memory of those uh, who, who have uh, succumbed to this virus. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew. You know, talking about social media, I sure would not have thought 
you know, two or three months ago that we would be <laughs> not celebrating Easter at the barn. I mean, that just, it wasn't even a thought of mine. I, it, who would have thought? Not just us, but that, that the whole world would be affected by this the way that it has. And I, you know, I, I didn't see it coming. All of those, and, and I encourage some, you know, that, that, uh, that from our company that no longer have a job and um, just reached out uh, to some and just to let them know, you know, while we were taken by surprise by all of this, we serve a God who's never taken by surprise. And, and, uh, and, and I, I love it when, when I get reminded, you know, I say, but, you know, you said that last time. Well, I say it again because we need a reminder that we don't serve a God who's not in control. Uh, I don't, I'll never know this side of heaven why bad things happen to good people. I, I never will. But I know that, that God's word is true and that he'll never leave us and, and uh, he'll never forsake us and that he'll walk with us through, through the valley of the shadow of these desperate and dark and, and, and death times. Um, he's not abandoned us. He's for us. He's not against us. And Satan is not in control. The devil does not have all the power. The demons are not running at will, at, at will, what they want to do, how they want to do it. They, they don't have that authority. They don't have that control. They don't have any power over us except that which we give them, and I choose to give them none in the name of Jesus. I'm not giving in to that fear. I'm not giving in to that worry. And, 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 the, and though I'm, you know, a bunch of us are affected the same way where for a period of time, we got no income coming in, but the same God who helped us through the tough spots that we had in our lives before is the same God that's going to help us through the tough spots that we have in our lives now. And God's been too good to us for us as a church or as an individual, as a body for us to give up on God now, uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was another George Strait song popped up in my head. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. Uh, anyway, God's too good. He's too good. He's done too much in our life. He doesn't have to prove himself, even though he does, over and over again, how much he loves his kids. He loves his kids. He's got a plan for us, and he's going to see us through, all the way through, not just partially, but all the way. I would never in, in my wildest dreams thought that we would be celebrating a sunrise service via Facebook Live without a congregation here. And it's difficult. I don't know if all the other pastors are having as hard a time as I am because I thank God for, for the six, for the nine of us that are here, you know, that I could look side to side and I could pick off some faces. There's a whole lot less sleeping in services the last few weeks than there has been in the past because... The, the nine that are here, when I scan over them, if they nod off, I need to hear an amen when they lift their head up. Uh, there hadn't been as much sleeping, I've noticed, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to move on away from that. Uh, but I, I pray that I was concerned. I mean, I woke up a few weeks ago, and I, I may have even said it Sunday. I, I can't remember because a lot of times I'll shoot from the hip, and then, <laughs> then I can't remember what it was I said. And I end up sometimes saying it again, or maybe it's by design that God wants you to hear it multiple times. You know, it was in a meeting. Uh, they did, uh, uh, some consultants did a study of meetings or communication, especially in change management. That when there's a change that's happening or communication that's being rolled out, a lot of times uh, you'll hear the speakers say it three different times, sometimes three different ways. And the awesome thing about that is the first time you hear it, you don't hear the, what's after that if it's something that's been changed because your mind is on what the change was. Oh my goodness, now I'm focused on what it was he just said and I missed the things that were said after that. So a lot of times you'll hear them say it three different times, three different ways. Um, but I pray that we not become lax. We not become lax in our relationship with the Lord just because we can't come together in this barn. I mean, that's been a concern of mine that, um, and I'll, I'll just say it and I ask them, I, I, when I had that concern, I asked our group, I said, how many are watching? And, uh, I think there's been an average of about 40 families. So, you know, if 40, probably some of them are a husband and wife or more than one. So you could say probably safely between 60 and 80 plus it shared between 60 and 80 families, 
our church family are watching, uh, are watching during the church service. I pray that the remainder of them are watching another church service, uh, that they're watching another local service. They're watching Rose Heights, or they're watching uh, Jensen Franklin, or they're watching uh, James McManus, or they're watching Jake's, or they're watching um, any one of them that they're watching. Uh, getting fed the gospel of Jesus Christ and not just sitting back and saying, okay, well, the church is taking a break, so I'm taking a break. I mean, I pray that that, I pray that that don't happen. You know, every scripture, because I want to remind you that this barn, this building is not the church. This barn, this building, Trails in Cowboy Church, this church, this, what we call the modern day church, this isn't the church. <laughs> Every scripture, so I went into the Strong's Concordance and I looked, every scripture with the word church in the New Testament all had the exact same Greek word. Every one of them, all the way down. And it was Greek word 1577. 1577 is ekklesia. It's a reminder. Ekklesia, E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A. And the definition of ekklesia is the called out ones. The called out ones. It wasn't a building. It's not, this is an ecclesia. This Trails in Cowboy Church on this foundation is an ecclesia. And River Cross and Cowboy Church on their foundation is an ecclesia. And Bar None on their foundation. It's not that. It's the people that make up Bar None. It's the people that make up River Cross. And it's the people that make up Trails in. We are the movement. It's the called out ones. And every one of us are called out, out to something out to be a witness for the gospel of Jesus Christ, out to share outside of these walls. I've said it a bunch before. This is just the field house. This is where we come to get pumped up, charged up, and sent out because we're called out. We're ecclesia. We are the church, and the church is a movement. We don't live in these walls. We're not stationed here. We don't have bedrooms here. We don't have our living quarters here. We go out, out to our families, out to those that we come in contact with, out to our community. We reach out. Just because we can't gather in this bar barn, it doesn't mean that we cease to become ecclesia. We have a unique opportunity as the ecclesia to reach out to those around us, to be and to show the love of Jesus Christ. What better time than during Passion Week, during this Easter season, when the focus is on him anyway? What better time? I guarantee you, probably some of us know some folks that they might even be homeridden. They, they, or, or they don't Facebook or they don't social media. What an opportunity to take the church to their house. What an opportunity to bring them to your church, to be the ecclesia. Ask God to put those people on your heart. Ask him to put them on your heart, in your mind, that you could reach out to. This isn't a time to relax and to shrink back from God. This is a time to spur forward, to move on, to spur on, pressing into the things of God like never before, to feed yourself spiritually on the things of God and to come out of this. Man, I don't want us to come out of this on the other side spiritually malnutritioned, spiritually malnutritioned, <laughs> but to come out of this on the other side uh, spiritually full of nutrition, spiritually stronger than ever before. Now, we're blessed. I mean, just because we've had to, uh, uh, you know, have church the way we've had it. Those of us that continue to show up and, and to be the church, uh, for those on Facebook Live and for those on social media that are, that are watching, but we've had the opportunity to still stay plugged in and stay charged up, to stay in the Word and, uh, and to stay in worship. And, and to, uh, to stay read and read up. And, and we still have the opportunity to, to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Day by day. Um, I want to, let me back up just a moment. You know, to feed ourselves spiritually on the things of God and to come out spiritually stronger. Giving glory and honor to the King of Kings like Mary did. Like Mary did. Uh, day by day during Passion Week. I want to spend just a little bit more time. Yesterday, yesterday we posted, and I actually did, did I've been walking 
walking with Christ to the cross uh, day by day since Monday. And you talk about a, a problem. The first day on 1230, so it was, uh, it was the, the first message that we did, what happened on Monday, this day in history, on uh, the last week of Christ before the crucifixion. And, and I had that put together, uh, you know, cursed the fig tree, and I had that done by 1230. It did not post until about 9 o'clock that night. I mean, it took, I don't know what was going on with Facebook that day, but it took, dog, it took n nine hours for it to post. Uh, but thank God it posted. But we've been walking with Christ to the cross all the week. And yesterday was, uh, one of them was Jesus had, had cleared the temple, or Jesus had uh, ministered in the temple. He taught in the temple. And the other thing was that, um, that Mary anointed him with that alabaster box, with that perfume. I wanted to stay right in there because it ties, I believe, it ties in real smooth with the event that took place on Wednesday. And that is uh, what we see right there, the plot against Jesus. I almost call it the plot thickens, but it was a plot against Jesus. So I want to I want us to move into that, to spend a little more time with Mary anointing of Jesus' feet and tie that right into Judas, Judas plot against Jesus. Uh we're going to go through several scriptures, not as many as we did Sunday. Uh Dale said praise God, Major Hill is back. You missed it. I bet we had 15 scriptures. Anyway, it was it was fun. Let's go. Let's, Nikki, go ahead and pull up Mark 14, and let's start with there, 3 through 9. And then right on the heels of that, uh, we're going to pull, we're going to go right to Matthew 26, 6 through 13. So y'all follow with me, those who are at home. If you got your Bibles, turn to Mark 14. And if you don't, just look on the screen and you'll see it. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. Y'all notice that word previously had. Uh, uh, it's all agreed on by every theologian that I studied that this was Simon was obviously somebody that Jesus had healed along the way of leprosy. Someone who had it, now they do not. And he wanted to make that point. They are celebrating uh, at the home of Simon, a man who previously had leprosy. And while he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. Matter of, it says that this is pure, made from the essence of. It is pure nard. Uh, she broke open the jar, and this is, this is significant, broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they said. It could have been sold for a year's wages. A year's wages. And the money given to the poor, exclamation point. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you. You can help them whenever you want to, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Let's compare that with Matthew 26, 6 through 13. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste! Can you imagine? What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. You know, she took the alabaster jar, an alabaster, in case some of you don't know. I didn't. In my mind, I had no clue. I figured it was just what they called a perfume bottle back in the day. An alabaster jar was actually a jar that was made out of marble. Not just marble, but it was called a very fine. When it said fine, it didn't mean thin or it was fine, meaning like it was worth some money. 
a fine marble jar, and it came from a quarry in Egypt. So it wasn't something that you could just go down the store and that you could just pick any kind of, this was a specific. I don't know if some of you got them, them fine sheets made out of that, I don't know, 2,000 count Egyptian thread. Cut. Some of you nodding, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And uh, uh, it's kind of the same. You can't just run down to Walmart and find you some of those sheets. You know, you got to go to BB and B. You got to go to the triple B to find some of these in case you don't know that's bed, bath, and beyond. Sometimes you got to go down there and you got to walk and you're going to pay, you're going to pay a pretty penny uh, for some of that Egyptian cotton that you got. You know what? I just, I don't know if it's any better than Texas cotton, but that you're going to pay a whole lot more for it. <laughs> you're going to pay a whole lot more for it. I know that. Uh, moving on. It was a bottle. It was a, it was a marble jar or a glass. I would imagine that it's fluted. It's this marble that was made and honed out into this fine marble that you put money. I guarantee that the empty alabaster jar by itself would have been worth some money. All by itself, that marble jar would have been worth some money. Uh, it reminded me of a story. Uh, years ago, we had a garage sale. And it's probably, this particular garage sale was probably maybe two years ago or so. And Landry and Aaron had come across this commemorative let me, I wrote it down. Uh, gold, it was a Jack Daniels gold medal, old number seven bottle. And it was empty. I did not empty it. It was empty when we got it. They came across this bottle and they put it in that garage sale. And I remember I was out there and I don't know nothing about that. I just thought, man, that's a cool look. That looks old. And uh, who, it's an empty glass bottle. And uh, so anyway, Landry asked April, she said, Mom, how much you think we ought to put on this bottle? She looked at it and goes, Psh, a quarter. A quarter, you sure? A quarter. I'm telling me, it's a bottle. So she slaps a quarter on it. Well, the next day was a garage sale. And there was, this wo there was this woman who came in, and she was looking around, all this stuff, you know. She was meandering. All of a sudden, she looks, and bam. She walked straight to that Jack Daniel gold medal number seven. She picked it up. She cradled it like it was her, her, her very own born. And she walked over, and she reached in her pocket, and she paid a quarter, and she had a smile from ear to ear. And she, and as she was walking away from the table, she goes, Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! And she kept on walking. That's a bad sign when you sell something at a garage sale, and somebody buys it and goes, Woo! And went on. Landry was like, what the heck? Landry got out her phone and Googled. Jack Daniels, gold, number seven. Oh, my gosh. That bottle was worth $100. $100. And the lady got it for 25 cents. <laughs> Just the alabaster. <laughs> I would have, woo-hoo! I would have, uh... Anyway. Just the alabaster jar by itself was worth some money. Um, Mark and Matthew, they both noted that she broke the seal and poured a year's wages, 300 denarii. When you look at that, now, when, when it, it, one part said it was 300, worth 300 denarii, the average wage, average wage for one day's work back in, 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 these, in these biblical times was one denarii. Or if you read Old Testament, one pence. I mean, uh, King James Version, one pence. One pence. This is worth 300 denarii. Or just 52 days shy of a whole year. I mean, 57 days shy of a whole year. But when you throw in the cost of the bottle too, you bet you that is a year's wage that she had right here in her head. They broke the seal and they poured this perfume over Jesus' head. It shocked me. It shocked me that the disciples called the act a waste. Whose head was that, was that perfume on? Jesus. Jesus. And they called it a waste. What a waste. 
It's easy for someone on the outside to tell you how you ought to spend your money, isn't it? <laughs> how many advices did you get from your parents? Well, you know what you ought to do is... You know what you ought to do with that money? i tell you what you ought to do. Oh, here's what you ought to do. Listen to me, I know. Here's what you ought to do. That was a waste. A waste, they said. They didn't understand what it cost Mary. They didn't understand what it cost Mary spiritually, mentally, financially, and humbly what it cost her. You know, I got to thinking because, you know, I like to put myself in that, in that. So you think about that. I have this year's worth of perfume, this year's worth in this valuable jar. And I have an idea that I'm going to break this and pour it on Jesus' head. <laughs> How do you think that's going to go? I'm going to break this. All right, I'll put it to you another way. Somebody that you admire way up here. I'm just, president. Let's just go with, with president. President Trump picked your name out of a hat. He's coming to your house. You've got all your friends and your family there celebrating he's coming. And I'm going to get a bottle of perfume. Now, I'm in no way comparing Trump to Jesus. I'm just comparing how this, how this would play out. Someone that is at, at a high standard. Break the seal and pour it all over the top of his head while he's at the dinner table eating. How do you think that's going to go? Well, if you survive getting tackled by the Secret Service, uh, then you will quickly realize that may not have been a good idea. You think about this. We read it because we've read it a hundred times. No one had done anything like this before. Uh, except if you read maybe Mary Magdalene when she cried tears and she wiped Jesus' feet. Here we are. She's about to pour this on top of his head. You don't think old Slick is in her head? You don't think Slick is telling her, don't do that. That's stupid. What a waste. It took, you a, it took you all this money to get that. Don't do that. They're going to tackle you. They're going to punch you. They're going to scream at you. He's going to be mad at you. Jesus is going to be mad. Don't do it. Don't do it. She overcame all of that. She humbled herself. She overcame the, 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 the mental, the spiritual, and the financial. You know, she could have sold that herself and made a pretty penny. That might have been her entire savings was tied up into this. I remember, no, I'm not going there. I was, no, 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 no. I didn't ask permission. I can't go there. All her savings was wrapped up into this right here. Who knows? All I know is, she broke the seal, and she poured it over Jesus' head. She honored the Lord, and she blessed the Lord in such a way that Jesus himself said, it will never be forgotten. It will never be forgotten. One commentary suggested that when she broke the jar, she didn't shatter it. She didn't crush it and shatter it, and now he's got pieces of marble all over his body. It suggested that she broke the seal, but she knocked, broke the flute off of the top. So that it could never, you could never put the lid back on it. Meaning that she was all in. She was committed. I'm not just pouring out a quarter of it. I'm not just pouring out a half of it. I'm going all in and I'm pouring the entire thing on Jesus. I'm honoring him with my substance. I'm honoring him with my humility. I'm honoring him with everything that I have. Knock the top off. No going back. And I pour it all on his head. Let me tell you, nothing you do for the Lord, nothing you do for the Lord is ever wasted. It's never a waste. <laughs> now let's move into Wednesday, and I want to tie this in. Wednesday, the plot against Jesus. Wednesday, the plot against Jesus. So today in history, let's go to a Matthew 26, 14 through 16, and then we're going to roll right into Mark 14, 10 through 11. Matthew 26, 14 through 16 says, Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Let's look at Mark. 
Then, same wording, same imagery, same theme. Then, then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, went to the leading priest to arrange to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted when they heard why he had come, and they promised to give him money. So he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. I thought it was interesting that Matthew and Mark state that then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went to the leading priests. Why would he do such a thing? Why would one of his disciples do such a thing? Why? Mark mentioned no motive at all. Mark mentioned no motive. Says they were delighted and they promised to give him some money. Matthew went straight to it. He was given 30 pieces of silver. He went straight to his motivation is money, Jack. I'm going to tell you right now, this is his motivation. Could it be that the waste, think about this alabaster jar. The reason I tied the two together, because when you study this, reading through Matthew and Mark, when you read through Jesus was anointed and the act that Mary did for his life, that was on Tuesday. The very next thing you read is then, then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went to the leading priest to arrange to betray Jesus. Could it be that the waste that he witnessed with the anointing of Jesus, of that expensive perfume, could it be that that waste and Jesus' response to that ticked him off so bad that he decided to sell out Jesus? Oh, I can't. That's it. That's it. Remember that John 13 said that Judas, what was his job? It is one of the 12. He was the what? He was the treasurer. John 13 confirms. I didn't give you that scripture. John 13 confirms he was the treasurer. He was in charge of the money. And John 12, 4 through 5. I think I did give you that one. John 12, 4 through 5. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, that perfume was worth a year's wages. Oh, wait a minute. So it wasn't them that said, it was Judas Iscariot that said, that perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. That Judas was the instigator of the waste comment to begin with. He was the one that John said. And who, remember, when you see pictures of John, where is he in proportion to Jesus usually? Right next to him, if not laying in his lap. Right next to him. <laughs> John said, no, 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 no. Judas specifically said that perfume was worth a year's wages. <laughs> And it, most commentators that I read said he was the instigator. The rest of them were like, what? Yeah. And that could have been. And they jumped on the bandwagon right along with Judas. I would imagine that he saw that alabaster box of perfume. <laughs> he saw that. The size of it. And he had already in his mind calculated the worth. He said it right there. That perfume was a year's wages. He already knew what it was worth. And I'll bet you, I'll bet you, now I'm just, this is just my shaunism, but I'll bet you that he saw that alabaster box, he saw her come out with it, he saw her with it walking to Jesus. I'll bet you that he in his mind thought this, I'll bet you she's going to give it to Jesus. When she presents it to Jesus, he's going to give it to me. We're going to sell that. We're going to put that money into the treasury. And I bet you that that's what he was expecting. There would have been even more money at that point for him to keep for himself. Pull up John 12 and 6. <laughs> John went on to say, not that he cared for the poor at all. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often, often stole some for himself. 
Oh, and he saw that alabaster box, and he saw the size of it. You think his eyes didn't get big? Cha-ching! He was hollering, woo-hoo! And all of a sudden, she broke the seal, knocked off the top, and poured it on his head. What are you doing? That was a year's wages. That could have been sold and the money given to the poor. He's freaking out. He had already hit the lottery in his mind. He already knew exactly what he was going to do with that money. Man, with what little bit we got now, they don't miss it when I steal some. I'm about to hit the mother load. And when she did that, and Jesus cut them off and said, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Instead, she honored Jesus by pointing on his head. I believe Judas freaked. The disciples jumped on board. Jesus shut them down. I believe it was then that Luke records this. The then that tied it all together. Why would he do that? This is the answer to the question. Why would he do that? Sell Jesus out. Let's go to Luke 22 and look at 3 through 6. Then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot. Mm. Then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12 disciples. And then the Mark and the Matthew talked about he went to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted and they promised to give him money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him when the crowds weren't around. The answer to the why question is, Satan entered Judas. Judas opened up the door to all of this, I believe, when he threw a fit about the cost and what was done with that money. I think all along, he was addicted to money. The lo- not just money, the love of money. The love of money. I think that was his determining factor. I think he saw a way. Because when you read those, when you read all but Matthew, it says, in what gift will you give me? What are you going to give me for this? He was trying to get, find a way. I didn't get my hands on that 300 bucks, but I'm going to get my hands on some money some way. And he sold out Jesus. And he sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. When you, and, and it ties back, and I didn't, I didn't reference this. It ties back to an old, uh, old Testament cost. It was the cost of a slave. It was the price of a slave. They gave him 30 pieces of silver. The sad part is, the sad part is, I really don't think Judas expected them to condemn Christ to death. I really don't think that he thought it was going to go that far. I mean, he sold him out. Yeah, he got paid for doing it, 30 pieces of silver. And he took the money. Sure enough, did he, and that was money that the treasury, the, the other 11 didn't even know about. 12, well, Jesus knew, but he didn't know Jesus knew. But the other 11, hey, that was money they didn't even know about. So this was all his money, 30 pieces of silver. Man. I mean, I done seen Jesus escape the, uh, escape the Jewish leader several times. I mean, they've been after him a bunch. And he's able to slick, uh, uh, sneak out each time. He's able to confound them. He's able to confuse them. He's able to make his way out. Yeah, I sold him out. But there ain't no way that they're actually going to capture him, that they're actually going to crucify him. I mean, there's, he, I don't even believe he had a thought about that whatsoever when he made the agreement to betray Jesus on this Wednesday. Pull up Matthew 27, 1 through 10. The sad part is, I don't think Jesus expected them to condemn Christ to death at all. He was just after the money, not realizing that he was predestined for this very purpose. You know, I don't know that it was God that said, you know what, I'm going to pick him, eeny, meeny, miny, Judas. You are going to be condemned to death because you are going to be the one to betray Jesus. I think that God knew the choices that he was going to make ahead of time. And therefore, he was predestined because he looked into the future and saw the choices that Judas was going to make. (laughs) He was 
predestined, chosen for this very purpose. It says, very early in the morning, the leading priests and the elders of the people met again to lay plans for putting Jesus to death. Then they bound him, led him away, and, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. So he took the 30 pieces of silver back to the priest and the elders. I have sinned, he declared, for I have betrayed an innocent man. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean to. That wasn't his intent, but he did it anyway. And he rung a bell that could not be unrung for 30 pieces of silver. What do we care? They retorted. That's your problem, Jack. Then Judas threw the silver coins down in the temple and went out and hanged himself. The leading priests picked up the coins. It wouldn't be right to put this money in the temple treasury, they said, since it was payment for murder. <laughs> they admitted right there. It's blood money. After some discussion, they finally decided to buy the potter's field and they made it into a cemetery for foreigners. That is why the field is still called the field of blood. This fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah that says, they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price at which was valued by the people of Israel, the, of which he was valued by the people of Israel, and purchased the potter's field as the Lord directed. Mm. When I looked up that remorse, it uh, depends on what translation you're reading. Uh, Matthew let me go to Matthew 27, 1 through 10, one more time. It says he was filled with remorse. When you look at that remorse in verse 3, repented. It said in the King James Version, repented himself. When you look up that word used, remorsed or repented himself, it does not mean that he uh, repented unto salvation. It means that he had regret. He had regret that he had done this thing. Pull up this last scripture. We wonder, well, what happened to the man? Acts 118 gives uh, a, a final depiction. In 27, in Matthew 27, it says that he went out and he hanged himself. He went out and he hanged himself. And he went out at the very end, verse 5, and he went out and he hanged himself. Now let's go to, to Acts one eighteen. Judas had bought the field with the money he received. Judith, Judas didn't specifically buy that as a purchase he made for the coins before he died because that money was given to Judas and could not be taken back into the treasury. They did for Judas and put the field in Judas' name as the buyer of that field. Judas had bought a field with the money he received for his treachery. Falling headfirst there, his body split open, spilling out all of his intestines. So it's believed that when Judas went out and hung himself, he hung, hung himself over a cliff by a tree limb that one of two things happened. Some commentators say that the limb broke. Another one's three. Some say that he hung himself, the limb broke, and he fell, and, and his, his, body, his blood was spilt. He died by hanging. His body busted open when it fell. Another believed that the knot came undone and that he fell and, it, and he was burst open. A third thing was that, Jesus, that uh, Judas hung himself. Someone found him there and cut the rope, and his body dropped and busted. Either way, they all agree that his body split open when it fell. As he fell head first, his body split open, spilling out all of his intestines. That field today is called the field of blood. The field of blood. So that is the day in history on Wednesday when he betrayed Jesus. You know, I pray that, um, I don't know where it is, but it says that money, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Penoist translation is the root of all evil or the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. 
But I pray that we not get so caught up in today's world, in today's situation, that we put a higher appreciation for money than we ought to. The love of money, the love of money is what I believe, um, <laughs> is what I believe was the gateway that allowed Satan to enter into the heart of Judas. And he led him from there to conspire uh, with the Jewish leaders how he would betray him, how he would betray him. I'm going to ask you to put your trust in the Lord Jesus. I know right now funds may be tight. I mean, I got my quarterly statement on my 201K, and uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it alone because it'll make you sick to your stomach if you dwell on the loss uh, that we've suffered uh, as a nation, uh, in our own households, in our retirement funds, in our retirement funds. It'll make you sick if we focus on that. I want to encourage you to put your trust and your hope in the one who never decays, the one who never ages. Uh, he's the ancient of days, but he sure ain't got no, uh, he sure ain't got no uh, rust on him. And that's Jesus. And that's Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in God. And, uh, and he's going to see you through. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for the opportunity that we've come today, Lord, to gather in your name and to tie these scriptures together. Lord, I had no idea. I had no idea uh, why he would betray you, Lord, the way he did. The decisions that Judas made. Lord, I didn't know. I thank you, Lord. It wasn't until I dug in to read the scriptures why I have a pretty good idea of what, would his, what was his motivating factor in all of this. And God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that we not be guilty of, of doing the same, that we not be guilty of leaving you and getting upset with you uh, when we see the things that happen to, to, our, to our money, when we see the things that happen to us financially. But you are the God who gives and, and the God who takes away. And God, I pray that we look to you in the good times, we look to you in the bad times, we look to you in all times to see us through. God, I praise you and I thank you that we don't put our, it's not in our money we trust, it's in God we trust. So Father, I pray that every time we look at a dollar bill, every time we look at a bill, every time we look at a coin, we're reminded that it's in God we trust. It's, that is the message on our currency. In God we trust. Lord, we praise you and we thank you uh, for being that great, great God that we can put our hope and our trust in. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.